guys, so I'm here today to do the time and place tag. I was tagged by the creator Jen, whose video I will link in the description box of course, but this tag is basically where you pick 10 books that you have particularly vivid memories about the time and place and maybe just where you were in your life around when you were reading them. You then talk about the memory and briefly about the book. So I have 10 books here that anytime I look at or reread just conjure up that very specific memory of when I first read them. I'm going to share them with you guys and I hope you enjoy the video. Some of the memories are more serious and some of them are a bit more silly and I also have quite a few children's books in this mix. I also don't have physical copies of all of the books. I'm going to start with Small Gods by Terry Pratchett. Now this was the first ever Terry Pratchett book I read and I read this when I was about nine which was probably a little young. I remember enjoying it but also being quite confused and really not understanding all of the references given that I was in the age demographic. But the reason I remember this so well is not just because it was my first Terry Pratchett book but it was also because when I used to go on holiday with my parents, um, I was an only child and we used to go on holiday, just the three of us, and my dad and I were massive readers. My mum's a big reader too. It was always my dad and I who never had enough books with us on holiday and always got through all of our books too quickly. So I ended up reading this one which my dad had brought with him because I'd run out of books and obviously it introduced me to Terry Pratchett. It didn't really get me into Terry Pratchett. I would say it was The Wee Free Men, which I read the year after. And because that's more of a young adult version of Terry Pratchett's style, it really got me into it and was probably a little bit more appropriate for me at that age. But obviously I've got very, very strong memories of this and talking about it with my dad and we make om jokes still to this day. So I had to mention this one. But in a similar vein, one that's memory is even sillier and this is another book I read because I ran out of books on holiday and it's Italo Calvino's Italian Folk Tales. Again, I was quite young when I read this. I was still in primary school and I was in Spain with my parents and we were away for two weeks, which was no good for um, books. With me and my dad, we both ran out of books on this trip. So he gave me Italo Calvino's Italian Folk Tales. And I absolutely adored this book. It is tiny font, it's huge, and it's just a massive collection of folk tales, fairy tales, very traditional and a lot of which are kind of similar. I read it from cover to cover, regardless of how repetitive it was, and absolutely fell in love. But what I find particularly amusing about the memory attached to this is that my dad had also run out of books, so we basically had to swap books. But like I said, I was a kid, I was still in primary school, and the books I'd been reading on holiday were Famous Five books by Enid Blyton. So my dad had to read one of my Famous Five books, which, if you're not familiar, Famous Five was just a children's series about four kids and their dog who went on like random adventures in the British countryside. Uh, I don't think my dad was particularly pleased with the swap. At least we're on the subject of children's books. I'm going to bring up a book that is not going to be a surprise to anybody in this video and is probably a bit of a cliche, but I'm going to go for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, this isn't the copy I read because the first time I read this, I didn't actually read it. I listened to it on audiobook. I was six or seven and it had just started to get quite popular. The second one had just come out and my childminder uh, lent me the audio cassette tapes for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It was the Christmas holidays from primary school. And I just remember it so vividly because I couldn't stop listening to it. And it was Christmas Eve and I had obviously gone to bed earlier than my parents and my grandma who were in the living room and I was listening to my Harry Potter audiobook obviously really highly like wired for Christmas the next day and it was the bit when Voldemort and Harry meet um, at the end of the book and I just ran through crying to my parents and my grandmother saying Voldemort's gonna kill Harry, Voldemort's gonna kill Harry. I mean, I was perfectly aware that there was a sequel already to this book, but I, I genuinely, genuinely feared for Harry's life. That memory just sticks so vividly in my head to this day that um, it's always what I think of when I think of when I was introduced to these books. Another children's book that I have associations with the audiobook for, but I don't have a physical copy on me, is The Witches by Roald Dahl. The reason that I have such strong memories of this is because the first time I listened to it on audio cassette and that being the first time I read it as well it was with my neighbour Jordan when I was a little kid 
and he used to come round and we would put the witches on the audio cassette in the tape player we would switch all the lights off and we would go underneath the quilt in my bed and just basically get really scared we would just make this very scary atmosphere for like like I said we were young and put the witches on by Roald Dahl which if you've read you know is an incredibly creepy story although it's for children and just really just freak ourselves out together underneath the quilt it's just a really fond childhood memory for me last children's book I'm going to mention in this video is The Breadwinner this book is more serious I read this book when I was 10 and it is aimed at children but it's based on the true story of a young girl in Afghanistan struggle in like a Taliban ruled Afghanistan and just the awful things that happened to her and I believe the author spoke to her in a refugee camp and uh, recorded her story and then wrote the book. His name was Pervana and there's actually a sequel called Pervana's Journey. It's one of those books I really see as a transition in my reading because it was on such a serious topic and I read it in a time in my life when, like I said, I was about 10 and I was learning to understand the world better and develop political opinions, understand the world and diversity in people's lives at that point in my life and I think I read it whilst um, the war in Afghanistan was going on. Earlier, just before I read the book, I remember going on a massive demonstration in London against the war in Afghanistan and it just, all of these memories are associated with it for me. So the next two books I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention together because these two books got me out of the biggest reading slump of my life. So when I went to university and actually probably in my last year of high school as well, I really got out of the habit of reading. I'd always been a reader and I don't know what it was, if it was just that period in my life stopped reading. Then I remember in the summer between my second and third year of university, I went to a Greek summer school to learn ancient Greek and I took some books with me. And just given like the free time you had apart from learning Greek, I really got back into reading and I read these two books whilst I was there. I First I read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood and I was just captivated. It was the first time in years that I had really cared about a book and not been able to put it down, which was such a wonderful feeling. And then I started reading The Fall in Our Stars, which just flew through it and it really just reminded me of how much I loved reading and I think it's one of the books that kind of got me into booktube because I then filmed a book wrap up on my YouTube channel which was not at this point for books about those two books and another book and just talked about it. I remember reading this when I was at my summer school and then reading it on the way back on the train and just bursting into tears obviously at the conclusion. It's just such a vivid memory and I feel like I owe a lot to these books. Whilst I'm mentioning John Green, I'm going to mention another John Green book. And I don't have a physical copy of this one because I actually read my friend Nicola from Robotnik's copy. I read Looking for Alaska the summer between my third and fourth year of university. Now, the reason that this book just really sticks out to me is I read it in my bed. I just remember lying in my bed for like two days, uh, maybe during a readathon, reading it. And it is just stuck with me so vividly. Um, Looking for Alaska is another contemporary book that deals with quite serious topics by John Green. But the summer before, when I was 20, a friend of mine from high school actually died. And obviously that was a really awful thing to happen. And I remember struggling with it that summer, just struggling with the idea of somebody my age dying as well. And obviously that was just a really horrible thing to happen. But then I remember reading Looking for Alaska the next summer, obviously a while after this had happened and I'd kind of processed it a bit more then and it deals with the death of a young person and how other young people deal with the death of somebody their age and I'd never read a book that dealt with just young people dealing with a young person's death and I remember although it had been almost a year since this tragedy I just, it really spoke to me and I just thought it was such an amazing book. I just remember not being able to stop myself from associating those two things. I'm really, really glad I read it. It's quite a difficult one to talk about. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it properly, but when I thought of books to put in this video, that one was very vivid in my mind. It's difficult to move on from that. But the next book I am going to mention is a book I actually read for university and it's Longest is Daphnis and Chloe and I talk about this book like someone's about to burn all the copies and no one will get a chance to read it again because it's in like all of my videos. But again, it's just a book I have very vivid memories of reading. I was set it to read for a class I had in my first term of third year and obviously I'd read loads of books for uni and school before, but I just don't ever remember 
absolutely falling in love with a book that I'd been set to read from page one and it kind of changed my entire view on classical literature. I already loved classical literature but this book just did something for me that made me realise how accessible classical literature could be and how people that were reading in antiquity weren't that separate from me. They really kind of crossed a border from antiquity to modern days for me because it's just such a wonderful book and I read it in one sitting or one lying down I think again I was lying in my bed at night time reading this one and I didn't put it down until I was finished it. Absolutely adored it. It's like a short well written witty kind of romance. The last book I'm going to mention is Sunset Song by Lewis Grassett Gibbon. This is actually a bind up edition with all three books in the series which is called A Scots Queer. Another book that I had to read for school. Again it was just one of those books that I picked up not realising how much I was going to love. It's about a young girl in a farming village in Scotland and about her growing up. Her name's Chris Guthrie and it's a phenomenal book and I had to read it for a class for English and then um, write essays on it in one of my exams on it. But I just remember everyone in the class hating it except for maybe a couple of other people and myself and I remember reading it in my mum's bed, um, she was reading another book and I was reading this and she'd read this for school as well when she was at the same secondary school I went to when she was a kid and she told me about how she'd read it as well. The love of this helped me pass the exam and got an A. I have to thank it for that. I also just love that my mum had read it as well at the kind of same age as I had. But those are all the books I wanted to mention. Obviously there's probably tons of other books that I have very strong memories of but I came up with these ones all on the spot as I was watching Jen's video and since these were the first 10 that came to me, these were the first 10 that I decided to mention. But now I shall tag some people. I shall tag Amy from Shout Amy, Lorna from Books and the Bees, Claire from Reading Bukowski and Char from Char's New Chapter. But I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, happy reading guys. Bye!